So it's unless you want to just clip that onto your belt or put it in okay. your pocket. Yeah. And this, I think, should be fairly kept. Pocket's the easiest. Yeah. Okay. Fairly close, but that. not super. Yeah. Testing, is that uh, everybody here? Okay, sounds good. Okay, uh, so welcome back. Rob, do we have any announcements? Uh, I mean, it's a good now. It's again, meetings. Yeah, you guys have those. Yeah, I mean, so the big thing is, uh, uh, is after the formal abstract session in the afternoon, um, uh, we'll all walk down the hill to uh, Kevin Buzzard's talk. But if you get lost, there's a link to the location, uh, a map to the location of the talk um, on the conference. I'm sorry, what? Oh, yeah, lunch will be oh, here. Oh, lunch, lunch will be uh, will be here. Um, so we couldn't get that room anymore, so we have box lunches being provided. Okay. So uh, uh, starting off uh, the morning of the last day is William Simmons, and he's going to tell us about polynomial rings with operators and functions. Thanks, Johnny. And oh, uh, oh, yeah, to forward and backwards, we don't have a clicker. So okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. So first, just like to uh, thank Rob and Jeremy and uh, everyone who's uh, contributed to this wonderful meeting. It's been uh, very much a good learning experience. and. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to share some, some work that I've been doing in, in formalization. So just by way of, of background, um, I'm uh, coming from mathematics, uh, specifically applications of logic, model theory, and proof theory to algebra. And uh, so when I first got interested in, in logic, it was kind of a revelation to me, this, this notion that you could uh, formalize your language and, and you'd be explicit about your foundation, so this could give you some uh, deep insights into, into what you're doing with, with mathematics. And so 
think it's kind of a natural step from there to be interested in formalization. And uh, so I've uh, started a project uh, formalizing some objects that uh, I'm fond of from my mathematical work. And uh, one of my big hopes is to get some, some thoughts and feedback suggestions on some of the decisions that I've made so far and uh, what's, what's interesting, what uh, could perhaps be improved, and, uh, um, and uh, go from there. So, first I want to talk about uh, the, the players. So, um, you'd be interested in rings with additional operators. So, just arbitrary ring, maybe, maybe not commutative, um, but uh, um, have uh, some set of added homomorphisms from the ring to itself. And uh, just some examples, so if the uh, elements of this, this uh, set op uh, satisfy the, the product rule from calculus, then we would call this a differential ring. And so an example you might think of concretely is the field of meromorphic functions, and a derivation would be the usual complex derivative. So uh, another, so this is far from the only possibility, you could also just uh, let the elements of op be ring homomorphisms from the, the ring to itself. So you could think of the ring of uh, sequences of integers uh, with additional multiplication defined point-wise, and then uh, uh, a morphism could be uh, just the left shift where the uh, zeroth, uh, uh, the zeroth entry becomes the, is the old first entry and, and so forth. So um, the, the sky's the limit with this, and, uh, but uh, you can study differential algebra, difference algebra, uh, and so on, just being careful that you stay within your category. So if uh, you're talking about differential rings and you want to talk about a differential ring homomorphism, then just make sure that your, your homomorphism commutes with your, with your operators. So, given these rings with extra operators, you can also look at polynomial rings with extra operators. So, just for an example with a single indeterminate x, um, you can look at this polynomial ring uh, R braces x, where you have, uh, of course, x, but also now d of x is a new algebraically independent variable, uh, d of d of x, so applied twice, and so on. So, now you have infinitely many variables. And uh, depending on, on what sort of, of uh, operators you have, then you may be able to extend the operation on the ring to the whole, to the whole polynomial ring. And so you would have uh, kind of in the obvious way here for uh, a differential polynomial ring or a difference polynomial ring um, and so forth. So, but uh, this is just for, for simplicity of, of typesetting. You can also have more than one variable. You can have uh, many, even infinitely many operators in your, in your collection. And once you have these polynomials, you can look at uh, equations of, of these things. You can look at solution sets, define varieties, schemes, and generally try to, try to imitate uh, what you do in algebraically and geometrically in the, in the usual setting. So you might wonder, well, okay, that's, a nice, that's nice, and I can see that it's pretty flexible, but what is it good for? So here's one example. Um, it's got a system of uh, ordinary differential equations and, and also an, an algebraic equation here. And uh, you might uh, want to try to solve this numerically, get an uh, approximation. But um, there's, there's a couple of problems. If you're uh, just interested in, in polynomial equations, you've got these... Uh, uh, trigonometric functions here, but also if you've got a, uh, an unknown z and there's no equation of the form z prime equals or z dot equals something. So if you wanted to use, say, Euler's method uh, on this uh, as a numerical algorithm, there's no, no place to start. But what you can do is, in this case, reformulate it. Uh, let sine of 2.5z be a new variable s, and uh, then just applying um, uh, the chain rule here and uh, getting noticing this extra relation between s and c. Now, this is an equivalent system of uh, algebraic equations and ordinary differential equations uh, that's polynomial, and if you 
apply if you differentiate a certain number of times and uh, take uh, uh, combinations and, and cancel things, you'll end up with uh, an equation of the form z prime equals some of the other variables. And so uh, you can now apply, after doing this, this, this pre-processing, you can apply your numerical method and, and get a solution. So that's uh, uh, one way that these things can show up. Um, in uh, kind of more pure mathematics, uh, they also show up. So um, there are things, uh, for instance, as called differentially closed fields. So these are a nice analog of algebraically closed fields. And um, just uh, they, uh, their distinguishing feature is that uh, if you have uh, a differentially closed field and any differential polynomial equation uh, with coefficients from that field, um, if there's a solution in any extension differential field, then there's already a solution downstairs. So that's the, the analogy with algebraically closed fields. And these things show up, uh, for instance, uh, in uh, Khrushchev's model theoretic proof of the uh, mordell lang conjecture um, and in lots of different settings. And so these uh, just, uh, uh, ongoing work uh, with these. And so there's, there's interesting mathematics that uh, um, involve these objects. And uh, one last thing is just that they're fun, that uh, they have a lot of similarities with the, with the algebraic case, but uh, depending on the, the, what sort of operators you're, you're looking at, they can change the character also significantly. And so there's a lot of surprises and, and open questions. Um, uh, so for instance, just uh, um, it's, it's well known that uh, the four polynomial ideals over fields um, the the Grimner basis method gives you a, a nice decision procedure for, for ideal membership. Um, question for finitely generated differential ideals was open for, for uh, quite a few years. And just in the last few years, uh, we may have showed that in general, the ideal membership problem is undecidable for uh, differential, differential ideals. So um, lots of uh, uh, interesting terrain to look at. So, it's a nice uh, 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 area to, to look at. And so as I was thinking about uh, how can I combine my interests in, in formalization and also these uh, objects that I'm, I'm interested in, um, noticed a few things. And so first of all, um, to my knowledge, there isn't any formalization of, uh, of these sorts of objects in any proof instant libraries. Um, I'd be interested uh, to hear about uh, uh, if there are. Um, but uh, uh, wasn't able to find any. Uh, one interesting aspect of um, when you think about trying to formalize rings like this is that you can't simply name the variables. So um, a lot of the uh, uh, existing formalizations of multivariate polynomials, um, they're restricted to finitely many variables. And that's not going to work if you're looking at uh, um, a situation like this because uh, like uh, with the example before, uh, in general, you're going to have uh, no relations between your, say, your derivative and your second derivative and third derivative and so forth. So you just need, from the get-go, infinitely many variables. And um, you could just stick to, to the differential case, but like I say, there's, there are other uh, situations of interest. And why just stop there with differential or difference? And, uh, um, uh, it would be nice to be able to package it all up in, in, in one simple setting. John? So MV polynomial? Okay, so uh, that would be interesting to talk about. So I, I uh, only uh, saw, that, saw that recently. And uh, um, so um, that would be a, a, a nice thing to look at. Sure. So... Um, uh, did look into, into some background, so here's uh, uh, a few, some papers and, and uh, uh, libraries or files that uh, I'm aware of, but uh, they didn't seem at least to kind of my beginning eye to, to provide exactly what, what I needed. And so um, I kind of struck out on my own and, uh, and uh, came up with, with the following. So some, some things that I was thinking about in, in trying to decide what definitions to make and, and how to get started proving 
um, is, well, I'd like to, to define these things without having a, a very deep list of, of definitions. Um, and so in particular, I define polynomials without uh, defining a, a category of, say, differential rings to begin with. And uh, so there are trade-offs there. Uh, another thing, generality. Like I said, I know of, of several mathematically interesting cases, but I'm sure there are more and uh, don't really want to, to limit it beforehand. So try to make it uh, um, as general as possible and then, and then restrict down from there. Uh, decision as far as proof assistance work with, uh, decided on Koch for, for a number of reasons. Um, I mentioned this uh, work by uh, Sophie Bernard and, and her collaborators, and uh, that was done with, in Koch specifically with uh, the mathematical components library. And uh, um, the uh, um, mathematical components has a lot of nice uh, additional tactics, uh, uh, syntax, and, and uh, theorems in the library. So it uh, um, seemed like a good place to start. And uh, additionally, I uh, was uh, acquainted with a lot of people using Koch, and uh, so that, that certainly kind of also played a, a factor in that decision. Another thing that I wanted to uh, achieve, and, and this is certainly something that uh, um, uh, is not entirely clear to me yet uh, how, how well it could work, um, is that I wanted to use existing libraries, for instance, mathematical components, but not really require users to, to work within that. So not necessarily uh, just stick with canonical structures and, and stick with the ring type and just try to fit everything into that, that setting. And so I find things kind of in a very general, kind of generic uh, cock way, um, but hopefully compatible with a lot of different frameworks. Um, got, uh, like I say, ring type in, in mathematical components. Cock has, has its own uh, uh, ring type, uh, Fox Bitters has uh, uh, implementation of, of the algebraic hierarchy with type classes. So it would be nice if, if uh, the definitions I'm setting up could at least be uh, instantiated in all these different directions. Um, and last of all, I uh, wanted to go uh, after talking with a few folks about what sort of um, data type or, or uh, definition I should be going for, I decided to uh, define it um, just as, as an inductive type and not try to model these polynomials as lists of coefficients or functions of finite support as is often done with, with algebraic polynomials. And again, a lot of this is because you're dealing with infinitely many variables and uh, uh, wanted to keep it as simple as possible. Okay, so that that would be that would be good. And so the uh, my my lean experience is is pretty limited. And so um, that would uh, definitely uh, um, uh, be something that I want to look at. So um, for the next few slides, just want to uh, give uh, um, some of my code the definitions, not not uh, uh, the proofs, um, and just kind of uh, give a flavor of of what they look like. So my basic type, uh, which I'm calling, for lack of a better term, op poly, um, uh, is, depends on just three arbitrary types. And so uh, you think of the, the uh, elements coming from x as coefficients, um, y is, is like a variable set, and z is the, is the collection of operators. And so um, since I'm, I'm thinking of building a, a polynomial ring, um, I just uh, uh, put in now some of these things are redundant, but I've got uh, an, a, what's going to become a, an additive identity, this zero, uh, multiplicative identity one. Um, I have uh, operations of addition, uh, subtraction, that, that's redundant, but possibly helpful to have, um, multiplication, and then I have these constructors to um, specify that uh, things coming from X are coefficients, uh, things from Y are variables, and things from Z are, are operators. Now, um, 
this looks uh, large, but it, it, it's really pretty straightforward. And the uh, the main thing is that, of course, when you're dealing with polynomials, that while you want them to be the, the variables to be algebraically independent, um, there are certain relations here. I mean, you want x minus x to be zero, and so um, I have there's this tension of you want to be able to to work directly with different representations and and uh, and say things about the form of, of or a particular form of your polynomial, but you also want to have some quotienting. You want to be able to say that uh, some polynomials are equivalent to others. And uh, so the, the solution that I've settled on, for now at least, um, is to state everything uh, based using an inductive proposition. And uh, so this is going to end up being my equivalence relation. And so um, uh, effectively quotienting out by by these relations. And then um, talk a little bit uh, in just a moment about uh, get it, getting Cock to, to understand this. And so um, these are just basically hard-coded uh, ring axioms, addition of associativity, throw in a few things because I have the extra subtract, so to say how addition and subtraction uh, relate. Um, uh, talk about distributivity, so forth, just basic ring axioms. Um, also, want to say that uh, my uh, operators should be added to homomorphisms, and so that's what's what's going on here. They're also uh, uh, respect subtraction. Um, say that uh, zero and one are added to multiplicative identities, respectively. Uh, this ID subtract equals uh, kind of almost center uh, of, the, of the screen is uh, just. Saying that you can, that with subtraction, that you can cancel like like terms, and then uh, a couple of extras. Uh, so sort of haven't given them all for lack of space, but um, just uh, say explicitly that I want this op poly eek uh, uh, to be an equivalence relation, and then just say that if if uh, um, I can replace uh, equivalent terms with equivalent terms, and that's the the, the last block of of uh, axioms here. So, um, unlike lean, which I understand has a, a, a quotient types built in natively, um, Koch, uh doesn't and um, has a setoid mechanism for dealing with with equivalence relations. And so, uh, I'd like to register this this relation that I've defined um, as a, a rewritable relation so that. Um, if I know that uh, um, uh, as, as polynomials, uh, P is equivalent to Q, I'd like to be able to just tell Koch to substitute uh, Q for P wherever it shows up in a formula. And so to do that, this is what the, uh, the syntax uh, looks like. So the top is just, like I say, registering uh, poly eek as, as an equivalence relation. And uh, by giving it the, the relevant axioms, it, it proves it automatically. And uh, then the disadvantage of, of doing it this way is that, um, well, I guess it's similar to a problem that you have with any quotient, that every time you, uh, you define an operation um, uh, on the quotient, you need to show that it's well-defined. And so, for instance, um, uh, this, uh, the second um, uh, theorem here uh, is saying that addition uh, is well-defined, that uh, if I have two things that are uh, equivalent um, according to the op poly eek relation, and I add them, that I can switch them with no with no change in the result. And um, you can see the, the the small proof, and the it is uh, a little bit of a, a trouble to every time you introduce a new uh, function, if you want to be able to rewrite with it, you have to go and and convince Koch that it that it respects this this relation. But thus far in, in my experience, the proofs have, have always been trivial. And so um, I'm hoping that it's not uh, uh, a significant significant problem to do it that way. So of course uh, we want to have some notation to to make it look a little bit uh, uh, nicer. So we've got some usual 
um, overloadings of the of addition multiplication. Um, this dollar sign is just for for the uh, coefficient uh, multiplication. Um, D uh, and then uh, 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 at P you've got uh, uh, for application of an of an operator uh, and so forth and. Uh, in particular, to point out the, the P equals uh, uh, apostrophe here is for uh, uh, polynomial differential or uh, polynomial with operator equivalent. So don't have to read uh, polyeq all the time. So the way that I've chosen so far uh, to instead of trying to to build up for uh, a large hierarchy is to uh, just add as propositions additional properties that I'm interested in. So if I want to talk about differential rings, then uh, I just make the assumption that uh, for um, if I'm talking about a given operator D, that it obeys the product rule. Um, if I want to talk about commutative rings, then just say that they they all commute like this, and so. Um, this is, for instance, what uh, the power rule looks like if you're talking about uh, uh, derivatives uh, in the, the notation that I've set up. A somewhat more involved example uh, involves ideals. And so um, with um, uh, extra operators, you want just not to be a regular algebraic ideal, but you'd like your your collection to be closed under application of the of the operators. And so um, uh, coming from a mathematical perspective, I just want to I want to talk about subsets, but um, uh, working in in cock, uh, at least it, it seems more natural to try to do something with a predicate like this. And so I'm just uh, saying that uh, um, uh, an ideal is a predicate from my uh, polynomial ring. Um, that uh, satisfies the usual uh, axioms of an ideal. It contains a zero, is closed under addition, and uh, multiply, is closed under multiplication by anything, uh, say, on the left. And you could also do on the right or do uh, uh, both sides. And then um, for, uh, let's talk about ideals that, re that are closed under the operators, then I have the second definition. So say the first has to be an algebraic ideal. And then uh, also say that uh, for any uh, operator in my collection, that uh, if something's in there, then D applied to it is also in the ideal. So uh, just to give uh, a taste of, of what you need to, to prove, say that uh, a simple case is uh, a differential ideal. Um, just going to give dilemmas and and uh, but not the proofs. Uh, the proofs are fairly straightforward once you find a, a convenient set of lemmas. And the um, the, the sequence is, is a little bit different uh, uh, than how you would prove it uh, um, just with pen and paper. I think. Um, um, anyway, so let me let me say what uh, um, how it goes. So uh, just at the top, just specify that I only have one operator here. So define this type Z, which uh, only has D in it. And uh, uh, assume that D is, is uh, a derivative uh, working in commutative, uh, the commutative setting. And let V1 be uh, my single variable that I'm talking about. And so this, this first definition, I1, is just saying um, that uh, uh, I'm looking at the ID, the algebraic ideal generated by V1. Just uh, um, since there's only one generator here, just anything that's multiplied uh, by it. And uh, so, first thing, just prove that this is an algebraic uh, uh, ideal. And then for uh, the latter part, usually writing on a pen and paper, you'd probably write a summation and say that it's the sum of uh, products of V1 plus uh, product times the derivative of V1 plus so on. So you could use something like iterated operations like in mathematical components, uh, big op, um, or something like that. But uh, I found it just as convenient to um, do it inductively here. So 
uh, a little bit different feel. Um, so I just have kind of this, this graded structure and just say that um, uh, you're at the nth level of this, this differential ideal, um, either if at the bottom you're in, in the algebraic ideal, or if you're the sum of something in the previous level plus um, something times the n plus first derivative. So that uh, uh, stratifies your differential so ideal. You should, if n is n plus one, you just take the degree. Yes, uh -huh. and so yeah, the, uh, yeah, so uh, I mean, that, that's one of the things that uh, attracted me about mathematical components that the syntax uh, is, uh, it, it does, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it feels fairly readable when, when, when you get used to it. Um, and so going from there, you just prove that at each of these levels is an algebraic ideal. Um, that they're cumulative, but uh, one levels, uh, uh, if something belongs to one level, it belongs to, to anything above it. That uh, taking a derivative just takes you up one level. And then just define the differential ideal as saying you belong to some level. And then uh, you can, uh, using just these, these lemmas that, uh, that have gone before, define it, uh, prove it in, in a reasonably straightforward way. So just to, to wrap up then, um, in my experience, uh, which uh, I think is definitely very preliminary, but uh, can see already that it's possible to define polynomials with operators in, in a very straightforward fashion, and it leads to fairly easy proving. Um, some other things that I'm that I'm working on is uh, looking at defining monomials, degrees, um, and being able to talk about the the usual uh, operations that you do when uh, doing elimination theory, and uh, so um, uh, that that's work in progress. Um, like I said, one of the one of the hopes to begin with is just that the uh, setup would be compatible with different. Uh, implementations of rings, and that's something that uh, I have yet to, yet to do. Um, I would like to show, for instance, that that these things are ring types, or that uh, be able to use uh, uh, the ring tactic uh, from from Croc to be able to automate some of these operations. Um, we'll see. And uh, beyond that, uh, of course, then uh, this is just kind of getting the definitions in place. There's lots of interesting theorems out there that, that use these sorts of objects, and so uh, I would like to uh, try my hand at formalizing some of those and uh, and um, see if this uh, this setup is, is equal to the task. So, thank you very much. I'm not sure. Um, like I say, I haven't haven't yet tried it. I've just uh, made sure that that I've put in everything. So that mathematically, these things are rings, and so my hope is that uh, these other setups will be flexible enough that, with kind of a minimal uh, translation, I'll be able to convince the system that that it is a ring or it has ring type or whatever. Give one example of an exciting theorem that you would like to be able to formalize, or is it too long to say? Um, so I guess it depends on, on definition of exciting. Um, there's uh, I know of a number of you find exciting. Um, well, uh, so parts of it. So the um, uh, this Mordelang conjecture uh, or theorem that uh, Rushovsky proved um, using kind of a whole slew of, of model theoretic tools is, is very interesting and, and probably, uh, I mean, that would have too much, uh, too many prerequisites to do fully, but it would be interesting to at least look at, see if I could state it and, and do something about the parts that are specifically using differentially closed fields. Um, there's ongoing work um, um, by people like uh, James Freitag, Guy Casal, uh, and Ronnie Naglu, Naglu on um, Axe Lindemann, Weierstrass type things. So things connected to transcendence theory that uh, 
heavily use uh, differentially closed fields. And so um, that would be those, I think those would be exciting. Um, kind of more pedestrian would be just to see, formulate the definition of a differentially closed field and improve some of its basic properties. But. Other, other questions? So, yes, yeah, so just to, to um, follow up on, uh, um, on Patrick's uh, question with a comment. Uh, so, I have found that it is useful, you know, when you start formalization to uh, pick sort of an ambitious project, but one that's within reach. Because what that does is it, uh, it so it forces you to develop a library, right? mm -hmm. but it also forces you to try out the library and decide whether it's working or not. Mm -hmm. And then when you get the theorem, then you have something to sell it. Right. So, my, my advice is pick a first theorem that maybe, maybe, maybe more Dell Lang is too ambitious. Mm -hmm. Pick a first theorem, name for it, and then, and then, then you can go with it. Yeah. All right. So if there are no more questions, let's, um, uh, let's thank the speaker one more time. <laughs>